So we're going to simulate some turns for you, just so you can sort of get the idea of how it goes in action. And one important thing to note is that in most board games, and when you have dice on the board, the first instinct that people have is to roll the dice. And so as this is a subtle training for nonviolence, we want to help people get over the conditioning that we have around board games. So the dice can't be rolled until this phase two of your turn. And there's a curse on the board that if you roll the dice before it's, your, it's phase two of your turn, then you have to forfeit your turn. That can have benefits and that can also have disadvantages. So we've come to a game and it's now my turn to go. So I will refer to my mission instructions and I have a few options. The first one is, is let's say I'm low on soul force tokens. Remember if any player has no more soul force tokens, the disharmony yuga prevails and the game is over. So I can choose to gain two soul force tokens. Or if I'm finding I'm not able to act across the various dimensions, I may choose to gain two strategy cards. Or I may look at another Cosmic Peace Force member and decide for their next turn, it might be more strategic for me to say, give Stephanie my environment strategy card. So that way when it's her turn, if she's in that dimension, she can immediately play this card and we will then enter into conflict, which we hope to successfully deescalate. Or let's say I'm in the environmental dimension and I have an environment card. I can choose to follow the instructions on the back of the card, which is then go and play a conflict card. So let's say we're going to do that. Uh, so I will take this card, I will put it in a pile, in a burn pile, and then I will draw a conflict card from the deck. At the top of the card, it says, to resolve this conflict, you must offer one soul force. So I'll take one of my soul force tokens and put that back in a larger pile. And then I need to choose one of the following games. We have three different mini games within Cosmic Peace Force Mission Harmony 3, and they are charades where you get to act out what's listed on the card, where you can draw what's listed on the card and your teammates then have 30 seconds to guess what it is you're trying to communicate. Or you can enter this game called Unspoken in which a word or short phrase is listed, and then there's a list of prohibited words right under that. So in the example I have on this card is the unspoken is dirty dishes. So I'm trying to prompt all of my teammates to say the words dirty dishes, but I'm not allowed to say pile, wash, chore, or plate. So I have to be very creative in how I prompt the response out of them. So then what happens is depending on how the conflict de-escalation goes, if the group is able to successfully interpret what it is you're trying to communicate, we say that the, the conflict has been de-escalated. So you want to look at the check mark and that will kind of tell you what the consequences are of de-escalation. In this case, because I'm playing in the environment dimension, we can either add one heart into that dimension, or if there's already ice blocks within there, we can remove those. If we weren't able to de-escalate this conflict, we're given instructions denoted by the X. And in this case, we lose a soul force token. Now the 
the consequences of escalation and de-escalation change depending on the nature of the conflict so that they won't always be the same for every single conflict card that you and the rest of your team play. So now that we've done this, we're ready to go into phase two. So phase two says I roll my dice. Woo! I got doubles. Let's put a pin in that. And I am going to move four places ahead from where I am. And I will then on the board land on one of these icons. And I will then do exactly what I'm instructed to do. I may end up having to play another conflict card. I may get transported to another dimension somewhere in the cosmos. I may end up getting sidetracked by the Tim Hortons that we found somewhere in the universe, probably in Canada, with a sweet temptation, which will have a consequence to the well-being of the whole group. And then you roll doubles. So what does that mean? Well, when uh, a player rolls doubles, it means I get to do my entire turn again once my current turn is complete. So after we go through my current phase two, it's almost like a reset for me. And I go back to my phase one and we get to do the whole thing again. 